My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to save you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, put days like today in perspective. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Leave it to the banks to spoil the Fed party. Yeah, the Fed was fine today, calm, measured even. But it was discouraging news on the mini bank crisis from the Treasury Department that sent the Dow plunging 530 points, S&P plummeting 1.65%, and the Nasdaq nose diving 1.6%. Yep, this afternoon, the Fed dip was widely expected. It raised interest rates by a quarter of a percent. Fed Chief Jay Powell told us there's still plenty of inflation in the system, so he has to tighten. But he also said the recent bank runs have made the Fed feel less worried about inflation in the future. Because weakness at the banks means credit's going to get tighter going forward. In other words, the collapse of three banks and the worries about many others are doing Powell's job for him, although not in the orderly way he would necessarily like it to be. It was calm. It was soothing. It was thoughtful. If the banking situation stabilizes and inflation, especially wage inflation, doesn't improve, then I, I, I get it. He'll hit us with a very necessary quarter point hike. He made that clear. Again, logical, reasonable, and something anyone with a savings account should actually cheer. I think the market would have been fine with the Fed meeting. Initially, we were actually up in response. If Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen didn't come out at the same time, and say the government won't be bailing out the shareholders or bondholders or failed banks. Even that's okay. But then she said Treasury isn't even considering a unilateral expansion of deposit insurance. Not okay. Because that's what's needed to prevent more bank runs. Why not just pull your money out if there's no guarantee? See, it just so happens that Powell was talking about how the bank failures could lead to a de facto tightening exactly at the same time that Yellen did her best to reassure no one. Together, the words overshadowed everything else that was reasonable and logical and measured the Powell said. Because Wall Street had actually started convincing itself that maybe, just maybe, the banking system was on the mend, stabilizing, and the government might protect depositors. All depositors. So we learned a valuable lesson today. Whenever we think that we can go back to normal, we have to recognize the banking system is just damaged by inadequate deposit protection, which revokes confidence and tightens credit all by itself. It is absolutely true that we want the Fed to be vigilant against inflation. Go down the aisle of any retailer, visit any car dealership, try to buy a home. It's all still way too expensive versus four years ago. Sure, Powell says there's housing weakness, but nothing meaningful. Wages still going higher, except maybe not as fast as before. And that's why I think a quarter point basis hike seemed right. It may be another if things don't cool off. But the banking crisis makes it so we got two markets. The market that needs a financial system with a clean bill of health, and a market that only wants to own the stocks of the fastest growing companies, especially tech companies like NVIDIA or Meta or Apple or Microsoft, the usual gang that does well without any financing. In between, there's a ragtag group of stocks that are trading on their fundamentals, uh, thank heavens. But those are very hard to judge right now because the economy is so hard to predict. The big bifurcation, I find it pretty nuts. The market in all its wisdom decided that if the bank stocks go down, then there'll be no economic activity because nobody will be able to get credit. But if a company doesn't need to borrow, then its business is fine. Of course, this is stupid. Tech's only as good as its customers, and many of its customers are in big trouble if they can't get credit, which is why perhaps even these stores were swept away by the end of the day. So let's do this. Let me step back, have a sip of my tea, regain my voice. Regain my... All right, that didn't work. And maybe explain what's really happening, as opposed to what this market's blabbering about, and I am certainly trying to enunciate. First, Jay Powell's trying, like everyone else, to figure out what the heck went wrong here with the banks that just failed, beyond incredibly poor management. Were the regulators asleep at the switch? Is there another thing lurking behind the door? Uh, is there anything we can do better? He, he's trying to be so constructive. Like everyone else in the government, he'll say the bank system is strong, but that's what you have to say. Everybody knows that. The banking system isn't strong, though. It's not strong enough for us not to be worried. Unfortunately, that fear can't be quantified, like the price of a home or, or the, uh, how much a car costs or eggs or bacon or wages or apparel. We just can't nail it down. 
And worse, Yellen created a completely unnecessary level of, of uncertainty by speaking about the crisis as if it's definitely ongoing. Next thing you know, you feel like it's silly to be focused on how many basis points the Fed's hitting us with. What, what matters is that two weeks into the, this mini financial crisis, we have no plans. We don't know what's happening. We aren't sure who else is going to fail, but it sure seems like someone will. In the end, we may end up with a worse solution. This is how you wipe out inflation. You get a vicious deflationary wave of bank failures that savages the entire economy. Of course, Powell doesn't want it to be that way, but Powell's a realist. He knows credit will get difficult if there are more bank runs. That's natural. Yellen doesn't want it either, but Yellen's a politician. She has to say over and over again that the taxpayers won't have to pay for anything, but we're somehow going to make sure depositors are okay, but definitely without extending the FDIC's deposit insurers or for anybody else. Powell, though, Powell's in a jam. If he didn't raise rates, he'd look like he was panicking. If he raised them by a quarter point and nothing else happened, it would have been fine. The problem is Powell has packed himself into what I call an off-the-cuff corner with these ridiculous press conferences. We got question after question after question, which in totality made us feel like the banking collapse is both past and more important future. We got plenty of fear generated just by the same questions over and over and over again in different forms, hoping that someone can trip up Powell. Uh, and we, we want to know why there was no oversight. Uh, how come the bankers were allowed to do what they do? Uh, hey, will it happen again? Now, that is the reporter's job. Powell has no choice but to play a rope with dope like Muhammad Ali. I hate it, though, because it doesn't help anyone, least of all you. And I find it actually unbecoming of the office itself. Look at it this way. We came in this session thinking the Fed and Treasury and the FDIC were starting to get control of the bank crisis. We believed things were stabilizing. But now, thanks to the congressional hectoring of Janet Yellen and the endless replay of questions to Powell about the fragility of the banking system, we came out of this session worried. We came out nervous. We came out frightful. And, of course, we came out stealing ourselves for the inevitable bank failures that we didn't think were inevitable going into today. The market got bowled over so easily because we were dumbfounded that Yellen, thought to be a seasoned, non-political hand, could be so tone-deaf with her words, destroying the most fragile banks. Think First Republic, perhaps? Knowing what we know about the speed of the bank runs, it was, let's say, ill-timed, ill-advised? Definitely suboptimal. Bottom line, we ended up not worrying at all about that quarter-point rate hike and instead being racked by the notion of which bank will collapse next, tearing out our hair over how depositors make it hurt, investors will be crushed. Well, who knows? Bondholders? Who's next? Not a great way to resolve what otherwise would have been an orderly display against inflation and in favor of confidence and stability that we all crave and, frankly, deserve. Sunny in Illinois, sunny. Hey, Jim, a big investment club. Booyah to you, my friend. Thank you. What's up? Hey, man, I've been a longtime fan of your show, and uh, I really need to tap into your 25 years of market wisdom. I'm thinking about investing in energy right now. As you know, oil has come down, but it's hovering around $70 a, True. a barrel. So. I'm looking at a company, and I'm wondering if you could tell me and all your other investment club members if you would invest in this one company that's pulled back about 10 percent in price, but it has a dividend yield of 10 percent. Would you recommend ET to us investment club members, and would you consider buying it for your charitable trust? Um, well, I would. I don't think it's well as well managed as some of the others. Uh, if you want to know the best, well, the best run. It's Enterprise Products Partners. That yields eight. Yours yields 10. I don't like to reach for yield. I would prefer Enterprise Products Partners. Kevin in Illinois. Kevin. Hello, Jim Boyer. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. How about you? Doing very well, but I've got a question. From March 8th to March 15th, the Fed posted on their website uh, on the 17th that they'd increase the balance sheet from $8.3 trillion to $8.6 trillion, a $297 billion increase. And I can only think that that's because of the uh, Silicon Valley Bank problem. And how is this not a buyout or a back, uh, 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 the Fed back buying the uh, debt uh, from well, SBB remember, and the Federal the Reserve has talked about using the discount window, which has been used historically to be able to preserve stability in the system. So I don't think the Fed's doing anything wrong. There's a lot of instability. We found out far more instability than we realized at 3 o'clock when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen 
revealed herself as being someone who gave false reassurance and then took that even that away. So let's uh, deal with it as we may. Sumner in New York. Sumner. Hi. How are you? Hi, Sumner. I'm good. Yes, How are you? Sumner Bay. How are you? I am good. Uh, what's going on? I want to know what's going on with the hospitality industry. Are we turning it around? I think no, so. Look, it, it, I think it's very strong, but it depends on the day. I mean, you have a day like today where people are very fearful and then wondering whether the, the good news will continue. And then tomorrow, if you don't get a bank failure, people will go right back. And that's why I think that stocks like Airbnb, Marriott are all good to go. And I even like the stock of American Express. All right, leave it to the banks to spoil the Fed party. They always do. Not a great way to resolve what otherwise would have been an orderly display in favor of confidence and stability and against inflation. For me, money tonight, with the Fed decision in the rear view, could it be time to circle back to the office streets, or does the sector remain untouchable? I'll give you my take. And then we're going to go and talk to, got to go back to the charts and talk to Larry Williams. The big box retailers tend to rally this time of year. But who's leading the charge? I'm going off the charts. And on holding, surged after earnings. So could this be an apparel name that can be held up in the face of a volatile market? I'm seeing if the stock can continue its run with the company's top brass. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.